know, Jesus was tempted of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. After he had defeated him, I believe this is the song that he would have sang. I'm not the devil out. Pastor Paul Jones. I had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some lonely nights. But when I All of my good days outweigh my bad days, and I I won't complain. That's what he said. He said I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. their day. 
caring is such a part of who you are that I'm sure you're not even aware of some of the little kindness you do and what difference it makes in their lives. I know your generous spirit has touched my life more times than I can count. Thank you is probably something you hear all the time, but today I say those two words, just know I mean them more than you know. Amen. I thank you, Lord, for those very encouraging words. I thank you, Lord, for that. As a pastor, Sometimes we need to hear. Sometimes we need just a little bit of encouragement to make that next step. And this helps us make that next step. I, I don't care who the pastor or the person or the woman or who they may be. Everyone who has a calling to feed the flock of God need a little help every now and then. And this is the type of help that goes further than money. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Yes. I want to share briefly a little word with us today. I, I tell you, I was reading this word and, and I like to follow the life of Jesus Christ because he's my example. I can't lead God's people without having the example from his own son. And when I read the Bible, I try to look at what Jesus is dealing with. Because Jesus dealt with people. Just people. Just like you and I. And I was looking in the book of Matthews in the 16th chapter there. And I read an account of what was going on in it really sparked my interest concerning how people were developing a relationship with Jesus Christ. Sometimes we get friends, relatives, all types of folk come about our past. We can call them what we want. Some of them is bad weather friends. Some of them ain't friends at all. Some of them is want to be friends. Amen. All types of people Jesus dealt with. And as I was looking in this 16th chapter, in the 20th verse, you can turn with me. When you find it, say, Amen. Those of us who can stand, let us stand in the presence of God for the reading of His Word. We will be looking in the 16th chapter from the book of Matthew beginning with verse number 20. Now I'll be sharing this from the King James Version. And this text read, then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Verse 21 says, And from that time forth, Jesus began to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. I find verse number 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Peter. Can you read that again? And he turned and said unto Peter, He didn't call Peter's name. But he said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an 
happens unto me. For thou savest or understand not the things that be of God, but those that be of me. Let us pray. Lord, impart your word to us through your holy anointing, Lord, and allow us, Father, to understand the meaning of it, whereby, God, we can grow from this day forth through our knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Usher. I really had a good time reading all of this stuff because... God was showing me a whole lot about people. Many times, people deal with each other, friends, family members, co-workers, and even sometimes your enemies. We call them haters nowadays. And you allow yourself to become their sounding board. It's someone they believe they can vent. They'll come to you and they'll talk about their problems and they'll share their thoughts with because they feel they are connected in some fashion with you. And, and there are many of those times that what they said to you is a lie. Or it may be not just the type of conversation that you really want to indulge in. But you're listening to them anyway. Just because you're considered to be attached to them in some form or fashion. It might be your child, it might be you friend growing up through the years it has an attachment there or something. so you listen to what they have to say but in truth what you really want to say to them is stop lying <laughs> or you want to tell them be quiet stop hating out loud but you listen to them you tell them but you don't, you, don't, you don't say nothing to them. You go on and let them talk, let them listen. Because they feel like they got a connection with you, some type of relationship. And so as I was looking into this chapter, I was looking at the close relationship that Jesus was building with his disciples. Now for the sake of time, I didn't want to get too many scriptures here, so I just read just a few of the scriptures of this occasion. But this, these few scriptures here, they actually sum up how that relationship was working with Jesus and his disciples. And as I was reading the story, the whole event, if you go back and you read this, you'll find it is very intriguing, very interesting how folk will say things to you, change upon you out of the blue. And so as Jesus was developing a relationship with his own disciples, and we read here what he was starting to tell them, he, he was developing a close relationship because he'd been giving them, he was giving them inside information. And so I chose for my topic today, put Satan in his place. Satan in his place. Amen. If you begin to read and study this chapter, you'll find that this is the beginning of the church foundation. Mm -hmm. In verse number 13, Jesus says, when he came to the coast, he says, who do Men say that I am. Uh-huh. He asked that question. And they told him, some say this, and some say that, and some. And you go on down in verse number 14, he said, but I want to know who do you say I am? See, see, he's trying to develop a relationship with his own disciples so they can know him and he can know them. Before he got to this part of their relationship he asked who people say I am. And some say you lie, some say you that prophet, some say who you say I am. And they went on talking. Now the Bible only records one disciple's reply. 
One disciple, one disciple replied, and that disciple was Simon Peter. And Peter's reply was in verse 16, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter was surely under the anointing of God to say that. Yes, he was. He was under the anointing of God because Jesus told Peter, Flesh and blood ain't revealed that to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Jesus was in agreement with Peter so much to the point the relationship was really developing and Jesus said, and Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church that the gates of hell shall not prevail. Now what Jesus was telling Peter was, upon the anointing type that God has given you, the foundation of the church would be built upon that. Because God had revealed to Peter who Jesus was. And this is the type of foundation that the church that God has built should have. A foundation of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, upon this rock will I build my church. A sure revelation came to Peter from God about who Jesus was. Jesus was so sure about the relationship he had with his disciples, he began to tell them, listen, uh, I'm the Messiah. I'm the Messiah. He told them that, had not told anyone else. But he told them, listen, don't be going out to Lava Mountain. I'm the Messiah. And, and, and I'm going to go down to Jerusalem and, and I'm going to be killed by the scribes and Pharisees and I'm going to give my life. And I'm going to raise up again on the third day. He telling this to his disciples. Those in his close proximity of life. Jesus had to have a heart of joy. To be able to tell these folk. What God had sent him there for. Because in things of God you only know about the world and the things of man. This is how you are going to be able to determine spiritual and natural things. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, the only thing you're going to talk about is the big M. That's me. That's myself. We will always put me upon the pedestal because that's all I know. But when I have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, Jesus is all I want to talk about. Jesus is all I want to tell people about. Of how he made the big M, me, a small M. Now he's Lord of my life. Get behind me, Satan. You may have to tell somebody that. And they may not understand what you're talking about. Might be your husband. Might be your wife. Might be your best friend. And you're only going to tell them that because you understand what God has revealed to you. God revealed to Satan, I mean to Peter, who Jesus was. For Peter said it himself, Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. And Jesus says, Peter, flesh and blood hath revealed that to you, but my father, which is in heaven. So now you got Peter under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and then all of a sudden, there he is trying to tell Jesus what he ain't going to do. God sent his only son to die on the cross for you and I. When we have made choices to serve God, Satan is going to come to you. Yes, he will. He'll use some of the very people you're in a relationship with to try to get your mind away from the things of God. That's how he operates. Yes, he will. And when you get in that situation, don't be afraid to let him know you know who he is. Say, get behind me, Satan. And 
somebody might look at you and say, well, girl, why you call me Satan? Just as you don't want to hurt their feelings, you listen to them lies that they be telling me, telling you, and you know ain't no truth in it. And you let them go on and, and, and spurt them lies out, and you know good and well they lie. Yeah, but you don't say nothing about it. Well, now you can just tell them, get behind me, say, hear what you say. a way that God is trying to design the Christian to develop a good relationship with us, but yet still Satan is always trying to get in the mix. You see, he had a very good relationship with Simon Peter. And Simon Peter got a revelation from God through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and then all of a sudden he's going to tell the Lord, no, you ain't going to die. I ain't going to let it happen. Get behind me, Satan. You don't do nothing about what God got planned for my life. That's what you need to tell those people. That you have developed some fashion of relationship with you. God got me on this course. Now, I don't know what he got you on, girl, but he got me on this course. So, I'm going to follow what God has showed me for my life. Because this relationship that I have is with him. There is a situation that Jesus dealt with with Peter again. It's not like Peter wasn't aware because Satan had tried to attack Peter on other occasions. And then Jesus went over to Peter and he told him, say, say, uh, Peter, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. He said, but I pray for you that your faith fail you not. And this occasion here also happened. Jesus was aware that Satan was trying to attack Peter during the relationship that he was developing with his disciples. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you must be aware who your enemy really is. Right. Amen. You must be aware. And when you become aware, you're going to have to expose him. In other words, let him know, I know that you my enemy. And I know that you're trying to speak through Sally May to turn me from what I'm supposed to do. I know you my enemy. And I know you told my boss man to tell me I don't have to come into work today because I don't I need them hours. But then you gonna try to use my boss man. I know and you can say, say, get behind me. God has already told me the plan he has for my life. I may fall to the right, I may fall to the left, but my faith is not going to fail me because God got me in his hand. Tell the devil to get behind me. Girl, I, we've been friends for 40 years. Satan, get behind me. I got a mission I must be on for the Lord. We have to do what thus says the Lord in order to come out in the plan that Jesus has prepared for my and your lives. We can't go by the plans of the devil. And he will give you some plans. He will give you some gold, make it look real good. Yes, he is. He's going to give you a car that's really shiny and the motor all tore up on the inside. And he didn't do things like that. Tell him to get behind you. Tell him to get behind you. Put Satan in his place. You're going to be discouraged as a believer. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be overlooked and missed understood. You're going to be lied on. You're going to be misled. But you know that God will see you through. You know that it is not the will of God that you be caught in a life of despair. You know that Jesus said that by his stripes that you were healed. That you can walk in victory. You know these things. And when anything of that come 
into your life and dwell within your mind, you can stop right then and there and say, Satan, get behind me. You're trying to block my progress. But I'm not going to allow that to happen. Tell Satan to get behind you. Put him in his place. Because he's going to come. He may come to you as your best friend. He'll come to you as a family member. You know what to do. If God didn't reveal something to you, you know what to do. You know how you can find that God has revealed something to you? You will receive his peace. There is a peace that comes with the blessings of God. Oh yeah, in a peace. Oh yeah, see, when God gives you his peace, listen, all hell can be breaking and loose around you. When God gives you his peace, I'm telling you, your bills may be stacked that high. When God gives you his peace, old Joe Blow may have said, listen, I found somebody else, I'm gonna leave you. When God gives you his peace, everything around your life might be messed up, but if you got the peace of God, Oh, the Bible says that the peace of God is without understanding. Because sometimes when God fills your life with his peace, you're able to walk through all the trials and all the tribulations. You, you're still able to say, thank you, Jesus. You know the peace of God. It's a past is understanding. You don't understand why. But girl, all that happened to you, and you ain't crying, why? Because I have the peace of God flowing in my life. And I told the devil to get behind me. I put him in his place. I make room for my blessings. I'm not trying to block my blessings. I know when my times of disappointment come, I can look up to the Lord, to the hills, where my help gonna come from. I know when things are not going to be right, I can put the devil in his place and trust God to the very end. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God revealed that to Peter. Peter didn't stand in his revelation. The Bible says, Jesus told him, Peter, flesh and blood has revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. God revealed that to Peter. And Peter quickly and so easily moved himself from standing in his revelation. Oh, have God given you a revelation today? Have God given you a revelation? See, God give us a lot of revelation, but sometimes we don't want to take the revelation of God because in my natural mind, I think it's impossible to achieve. <laughs> but if God gave you a revelation, he wants you to stand in that revelation. God may reveal to you, listen, I got this plan over here for you. You're going to be the master builder of this particular place. You're going to be the owner of this business. You're going to own this home that you've been riding by saying that it's yours. God revealed these things to you. But when you stand in your revelation, you've got to stand in what God revealed to you. You can't allow the devil to put doubt into your spirit. If God revealed it to you, God didn't reveal it to you to dwindle away. He revealed it to you that you may achieve it and give him the glory. And give him the glory. You don't have to listen to people. You don't have to listen to the haters out loud. You can put Satan in his place. I say this. Don't receive anything that you're not sure of. The Bible says that the devil is a liar and the truth is not in him. He was a liar from the beginning. Christians today have that battle that they have to deal with and not knowing if they're being lied to or being told the truth. from the person is from our enemy who is deceiving them and then he appeared to you and I with a big long red tail and horn we, we showed up no we ain't gonna listen and we know about our fragment of mind when they told us that's what the devil looked like 
we ain't gonna believe nothing he said coming to us looking like that. But on Billy Bob, dressed in his blue suede suit, his shiny shoes, the old Sally Bay, come with a mini skirt all pulled up and looking good with your rain bobbing all over her head, sounding so sweet. Yeah, you listen to her because she looked like something you might want to listen to. And you will hear that garbage. And all of that is is coming from the mouth of my enemy and your enemy. When God reveals stuff to his church, he reveals them to us that we may stand in his promises because there is no disappointment in the promises of God. If God has promised you something and you remember what God has promised you and you come to your senses and say, God told me I was going, you need to stand right then and there. Get behind me, Satan. You need to put him in his place right then and there because he has snatched away what God has revealed unto you. And he has ways that he can snatch it. Certain ways that he can snatch it. Oh, yes, he can. Snatch it through drugs. Snatch it through alcohol. Hey, you can. Use those substances to, to infiltrate your natural mind and you forget everything that God told you about. Because you wasn't feeling no pain at the time. You are feeling good. So the enemy was able to come in and take that revelation from your spirit. But you can put the devil in his place. It's never too late. Because you are the children of the living God. You are the people whom God has chosen to represent his son Jesus Christ here upon the face of the earth. No, everybody ain't going to suppose to be walking around with halos over their head. If that was the case, we'd already be in heaven. But God already knew it was going to be a whole bunch of us that wasn't going to make the mark. That's why he said many are called with few chosen for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God said, listen, I got something that can fit everybody whosoever will. He said, I got my grace. I got my grace. And my grace is sufficient for you. All you got to do is hold on and call out my name. And, and I'll be there in your time of need. Put the devil in his place, church. Put him in his place. Jesus developed a great relationship with these men. They were his disciples. Feeling good about them, feeling joyous about them, being able to teach them and share with them what God had revealed to him all the way from glory. Now they getting some real good inside information that the scribes and the Pharisees and the big scholars don't even know about. But they get it. They get it from the mouth of the Son of God. He is great relationship. That's the kind of relationship Jesus wants to have with you and I. Now Satan knows this. He, he knows that now. Why does he know that? Because the word of God says when Jesus went to Calvary and they laid him upon that old rugged tree, they nailed him up there and they, they pierced him in his side, they, they nailed his feet and the blood came streaming down, they crucified him. That, that's what they did. And the Bible says that after the third day, on the third day, they, they laid him in a borrowed tomb. Yeah, they did that. They did that. After he had died, they put him in a barrel tomb. He a borrowed tomb. He was dead. Yes, he did. But then the Bible says on that third day early that Jesus got up and he got up with all power in his hands. But listen, listen, he didn't just get up. He got up with all power. The Bible goes on to say that he walked the streets of Jerusalem and the dead couldn't stay in the grave. They got up and had to walk too. Folk that you see know they had died. That you see them walking by you. Hey girl, I thought you died two years ago. No, no, no. The power of God wouldn't allow me to stay dead. And the Bible said that he went down to hell. And yes, he did. And he went down there. He took the keys of hell out of Satan's hand. Yes, he did. The Bible says, and he says, no more death, no more victory in the grave. Oh, death, where is thy victory? No. Oh, grave, where is your sting? Understand me that when Jesus got up from 
the grave, he got up with all power in his hand. He loosed everything that Satan had against you and I. You can put the devil in his place. You can put him in his place. Don't let him toss us around like juggling balls again. Messing with my mind. Having me wearing my feelings on my shoulder. Uh, not feeling good today. I ain't going to do this for God today. Lord, I don't feel like it this and that. That is the devil. You can tell him, get behind me. God will give me strength. God will give me power to move on, to make another step, even in my weakest hour. God is able. And when you begin to confess that, I can promise you that anointing will fall upon your life. You'll begin to walk. You'll begin to understand. You'll begin to know that the presence of God is there for you right then and there. Oh yeah, he's a deliverer. You can put the devil in his place. Don't give him no more authority over your lives anymore. He don't have any authority. You belong to the Lord. Jesus died for us. Shed his blood for us on Calvary's Hill. Put the devil in his place. Put Satan in his place. Fight with the Holy Ghost punch. The fight is sick. 